turn your bibles with me again to the book of hebrews chapter 12 the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 onwards i'd like to read make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy without holiness no one will see the lord see to it that no one misses the grace of god and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many see that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like esau who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the older son afterward as you know when he wanted to inherit this blessing he was rejected he could bring about no change of mind though he sought the blessing with tears you are not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness gloom and storm to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded if even an animal touches the mountain it must be stoned the sight was so terrifying that moses said i am trembling with fear but you have come to mount zion to the heavenly jerusalem the city of the living god you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven you have come to god the judge of all men to the spirits of righteous men made perfect to jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of abel say amen see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks very important if they did not escape when they refused him who won them on earth how much less will we if we turn away from him who wants us from heaven at that time his voice shook the earth but now he has promised once more i will shake not only the earth but also the heavens the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken that is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain therefore since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken let us be thankful and so worship god acceptably with reverence and awe for our god is a consuming fire somebody say amen. amen the bible says here we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken amen hallelujah here the bible talks about in verse 14 make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy because without holiness no one will see the lord though that's not going to be my focus but as soon as, as i was reading just now it caught my attention so i'd like to say a few words make some effort every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy without holiness no one will see the lord so the point here is the lord wants you to be very clear about your relationship with people amen because any root of bitterness it's going to be a great liability it's going to keep god away from your life any person who is bitter in spirit will not allow god to work in his life the bible talks about esau when i say esau i don't mean to say jacob was a better person he was a deceiver as well but Esau is known for holding grudges the bible says you know make sure there's no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and to defile many i don't know why the spirit of god is bringing this text 
right before us. You are going to be a loser the more and more you nurture some kind of bitterness, resentment against people, against your family members, your friends and relatives, your colleagues, whoever it is. If you are offended for some reasons, that doesn't give you justification to legalize your state of bitterness. You understand what I'm talking about? You have to let it go because it's a bitter root. Once it is implanted in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind, it will defile you. It will paralyze you. It's going to take away your blessings. You will not prosper. You can never have bitterness on the inside and still be holy. People who are bitter, they will commit sin. Not one sin. A lot of sins. In no way we can live a holy life by holding on to bitterness. That's why the author says here, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Then it says, see to it that no one misses the grace of God. That's the point. See to it that no one misses the grace of God. That means uh, you can miss the grace of God. Though the grace of God is meant for all of us, some of us, uh, because we hold on to bitterness and nurture some kind of uh, resentful thoughts against people, so it will kill your spiritual life. It will paralyze your emotions. It will not allow you to go forward. You will get stuck and stagnated. And it's going to be a liability in your life. Unless until you let that go, you're not going to go forward. You understand what I'm talking about? Here the Bible says, see to it, nobody misses the grace of God by holding on to some bitter thoughts in their life. And also, it looks like another combination when you talk about bitterness. The next thing is being sexually immoral. This is a terrific combination in the kingdom of darkness. People who are full of bitterness, they also tend to be sexually immoral. Because it gives a legal ground for Satan to push them into any other relationship. Because they hold on to bitterness, they cannot go to God. And they go for other things where it is going to be really costing them something. They begin to lose. So, take care of that. The Bible says, don't miss the grace of God by being bitter or by being sexually immoral or godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son, selling what you had. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Proverbs 23. Amen. By the truth. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Sometimes people have a funny idea. Now wisdom comes all by itself. Who told you that? It doesn't come all by itself. You may be very smart. You can have the best language in your mouth. You may be very eloquent. You can impress people. You have a great personality. That doesn't make you anything in the kingdom of God. Let me say that. Listen carefully. Wisdom is always sought. Wisdom is asked for. Because realizing we are not the source of wisdom, but God is. Number two, wisdom is not found in the land of the living. You can dig the ocean and move around the world and you can go and meet anybody. You can take any number of degrees from the university. That doesn't make you wise. You can have the human wisdom, worldly wisdom, but definitely not a godly wisdom. The Bible says in Job 28, the godly wisdom comes from God. From heaven above. James 1 says, You need to ask for wisdom who gives generously to everyone without being partial. Amen. And also the Bible says, Do not lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways. That means I want what God has. If I want to have what God has, it's very simple. I need to ask God. I told you so many times, you know, unless you ask, you don't receive. Amen. You can say in all those things, I know, I know God knows every need of mine. Yes, he knows. But people who asked, they received in the kingdom of God. You need to ask. Amen. Ask, you shall receive. Knock, the door shall be open. Seek, you shall find. Amen. So when you ask, you tell God more about you based on what you ask for. Amen. 
you follow what i'm saying why we need to ask god that shows what is the intention in our heart that shows what we need in our lives so here the bible say why in the world he so will have to miss the grace of god it is because he was after the earthly things just for a single meal the bible say he sold his inheritance rights first of all he didn't buy it was given listen carefully to sell something to trade something which is given to you you didn't earn you didn't work for it but it is given to you by the grace of god without realizing that you try to trade it i want to tell you that's a worst sin possible in this world the lot of things that are given to us don't trade that don't trade that it may be your home your husband your wife your children amen a lot of other blessings that god has given to you never ever trade it for the things of the world amen so here the bible talks about esau saying for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son but now my point my focus is going to be here listen carefully after some time he had a change of heart he rejected something what was given to him by god then after some time he wanted to have those blessings you know in the bible he really began to cry he saw the lord with tears he went to his dad and cried daddy daddy don't you have one more blessing to, to be given to me but the word of god say though he sought with tears say he sought with tears what a ridiculous thing the bible say being the first born it was given to him on a platter sometimes i don't want any one of us to be like that later on to regret and to seek the things that you kicked out of your life maybe you no know, one god has given something we play around we full god we have in full everybody i pray the spirit of god will take it and apply it to your spirit it may be the opportunities the time the season relationships you know some ministry so many other things that god has given you graciously but today you disregard those things you don't value those things only to end up later on after losing your time energy you know opportunities this and that you seek the lord with tears for the same blessing you rejected the bible say he sought god with tears but then what happened he was rejected he rejected the blessing from god then he sought with tears he was rejected so now why the bible talks about this listen carefully why does the bible say about this it simply means when god gives you opportunities say yes you must say yes to the opportunities in the kingdom of god you do not know this yes you say is meant to take you to different heights that god meant for you everything begins with an s god calls you not because you are a smart guy you are a very beautiful woman you are better than anybody else the bible does say in fact you know you chose the weak things to shame the strong you chose the lowly things of this world to shame the mighty when you talk about qualification it's something that happens to you and me only after we come to christ so never ever walk in, into the kingdom of god thinking you are somebody and god needs you more than you need god <laughs> hello sometimes we think no god needs me more than i do need him unless you are taught by god you do not know what to receive and how to receive how to value the things that god has given you so graciously i would like to warn everybody here now listen carefully when god has brought something in your life it may be anything you say no sometime the no cannot be reversed because god is a god he will forgive you that's a different story you follow what i'm saying he will forgive you is a god of forgiveness yes you will go to heaven but some of the things in your life can never be reversed 
If God would call you for to serve him at the age of 20, you disregard the call of God. You say no, you say no, you say no. And now you are 60 years old. <laughs> God can use you. But you lost your time. Mm, your BPSI, sure is I, you need somebody to help you, right? You nag your wife, you nag, bring, bring me this, bring me that. And over and above you want to serve God. I would like to warn everybody, you know, are you saying no to some of the things that God brings on your way? Will not prosper. Maybe in your office, when your boss tells you to do something, you say no. Maybe to your clients, they tell, you know, this is the way I want. You say no. Now, the, it's a matter of convenience for many people whether they say yes or no. Because we are rooted in selfishness. The Bible says when you want to follow God, deny yourself. That means, uh, you know, if God calls you, say yes. Don't see how convenient it is. You know, sometimes even in the church, uh, people are very diplomatic and clever. When you ask them, hmm? they don't want to give a word. Pastor will catch me. But if you die and go to heaven, what will you say to God? What will you say to God? the main purpose why we are created in this world it is to fulfill the will of the father god had a design for you even before he could create you even before you were found in your mother's womb god had a plan and purpose that's the reason no he teaches us his word in the church so that you may understand the purpose of god amen if you have wisdom after 60 it might help you but you lose your time your seasons your opportunities a lot of things that god could have used you to accomplish to execute you missed it all your s is very important say yes whether you feel convenient about it or not and a lot of times we say we only look at ourselves right when you want to serve god we look at ourselves and usually people think i am a worthy that's an insult to the cross hello that's an insult to the cross who told you you are not yes somebody did say that right who is that the devil one of the names was satan is the accuser of the brethren that's his full time job voluntarily is doing nobody pays him anything you will accuse every one of us before god and you listen to the voice of satan more than you listen to the voice of god amen when you came to god and i want you to know you came with all your sins all your transgression we were not good people we were worst people in fact the bible says uh, we were darkness we were living darkness in substance and essence uh, we were darkness that means uh, we had the nature of sinfulness and of the devil He told the Pharisees saying, Now you are just like your father. Why? He speaks always lies. Are you with me? But only when you came to God, He changed you from being bad to good. Amen? He translated us, uprooted us from the kingdom of darkness and re-rooted us in the kingdom of light. We were darkness but He made us as darkness. a light we were slaves but he made you as sons and daughters the bible say for those who believed in his name he gave them the power to become the children of god so i told you anything you think about your personal life in loving and serving god it all begins from god not from you amen hallelujah first he loved you then he made you holy He didn't tell you, you know, first become holy so that I can love you. No, he said, come, all those who are burdened, heavy laden, come unto me. Amen? Come with your sins, come with your problems, come with your curses, uh, and all the kinds of things. Uh, now, I have the solution for every one of your problems. I want to talk to somebody this morning. If there is a problem in your life, I want to tell you, Jesus has the solution. Amen? He wants us to serve him. So the point here is first you must say yes. Sometimes we think it's a so being so humble. <laughs> to say no is. No, I don't want to be in the limelight. 
no we are not talking of the lime, lime light we are talking about serving god you don't serve god not only in the church you serve god in your office amen you must have a good testimony in your office you serve god in your business amen seeking the interests of your clients uh, more than you do your own interests do you follow what i'm talking about is i said no what good is it to me the bible said later on he saw that with tears but he was rejected but the bible says you know you need to understand how much god has worked for you you are the prisoner of your own thoughts because you you're not allowed yourself to be taught by god to think as god does amen the first step to liberation is allowing the holy spirit to teach you to think like god amen how he looks at you what he thinks about you what is his plan for your life that's why i say that now you begin always from god he is the author and the finisher of your faith he is the pioneer and the one who will perfect your faith till the last breath in your nostrils say amen, amen. he is the alpha and the beginning he is the beginning and the end in your life he has begun a good work in your life and he is able to complete it until the day of jesus he has taken the full responsibility amen how did we get saved you didn't have to work for it that's why i said now the bible says very clearly for the one who works uh, for him is wages are uh, given as a uh, nobligation am i right when somebody works for you you don't give the money as a gift in fact he will demand give my payment you know or some might always ask now we'll forget second third she'll say payment ma payment edu hmm that means i work for it i'm not asking for your money they say i'm asking for my money i work for it you better pay what i deserve what i earn for myself that's an obligation i must give i cannot say you know i will think about it i have to give i must because that's not my money it is her money but now the one who doesn't work but trust god the bible says uh, it is given to him as a gift it is talking about righteousness somebody who doesn't work towards the righteousness i have not done anything from my part to be called as a righteous person amen for that person the righteousness is given as a gift god say you didn't work for it but i gave you as a gift amen you don't deserve it but still i gave you as a gift you didn't work for it. you just believed me so i gave my son for you his blood for you and i decreed and declare that you are a righteous person that's what we read no we have come to the spirits of righteous men made perfect in the world come and nobody could ever say that somebody say amen. amen including moses the bible says on the mount of sinai he beheld the glorious presence of god he looked at god face to face 40 days he himself he could not say Yes he did see all those things but he was trembling with fear He was always uh, no very very alert about the presence of God He wanted to handle the presence of God so carefully because he could be killed at any time Even on the mount of Sinai the Bible says Moses said I'm trembling with fear That wasn't easy but in the new covenant what happened through jesus we call god as father amen so the word father people call, could call god as father only after jesus came into the world amen though the bible says not as a father has compassion on his children the lord has compassion on his people but nobody did have the right even the high a high priest only once a year he would go with trembling and fear into the holy of holies i want to tell you all of us we would have been dead and gone if we had to live under the first covenant but thank god jesus showed up amen the bible say god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life god said stop doing now start believing because you failed in your doing so what i'm going to do i'll send my son i'll take care of the doing part he will go and die in your place amen the law you could not fulfill i will send my son he will die in your place and he will fulfill the law on your behalf when you believe 
in the son of the living god you're going to be saved amen so when you think about god it's not a picture of terror for the people at sinai i want to tell you it was a picture of terror it was not something like oh god has come come let's go oh god i was waiting for you i want to talk to you oh god no nothing like that man was full of fear even to look at the glory of god even to go near the mount of sinai even the animal could be killed why god was holy man was loaded down wait down with sins in his life a sinful man will always run away from god a sinful man will try to avoid the presence of god adam after committing sin the bible say he went and hid himself in the bushes he didn't have the courage to come out and say god here i am it was god who asked him where are you adam because he was afraid of the presence of god are you listening to what i'm saying the bible says very clearly here you have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness gloom and storm to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them they said god stop if you speak i don't feel love i feel terror i feel the fear why because the state of man because the sin of man you follow what i'm talking about they begged moses tell god don't talk to me of god leave me alone i want to ask somebody here are you afraid about the presence of god this morning are you running away from the presence of god you have a serious question to answer yourself that's not a good thing probably you misunderstood god your ideas about who god is it's a misconception but in the new covenant the bible says but you come to mount zion say everybody mount zion you come to mount zion not mount sinai you come to mount zion to the heavenly jerusalem the city of the living god somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah it is not talking about a physical location it is talking about what god has given you and me in terms of the kingdom of god amen people will not worship god this mountain that mountain we don't have to go to israel to worship god thank god amen we go for sightseeing but those who worship the lord will worship all over the world in every tribe in every nation in every people group those who worship the lord must worship him in spirit and in truth somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah god is looking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth and the word of god say you come to the thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven somebody say amen. amen to the church of the firstborn who's that say it louder who's that jesus hallelujah to the church of the firstborn you know when you think about christ i want to tell you the most powerful institution in the world is not any government it is the church of the living god because this church is called the church of the firstborn say amen, amen. he is the image of the invisible god hallelujah he radiates the, the entire glory of god for several thousands of years i want to tell you for several thousands of years god did speak to different people different generations through prophets and so many other people but in the last days the bible says now god does speak through his servant when he was baptized in the river of jordan i want to tell you when he came out the bible say the heaven was open and there was a voice that saying he is my son he is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased listen to him in the last days i want to tell you god doesn't speak through that person this person he is speaking through his son jesus christ who came into the world and said i am the truth the way and the life 
while he was preaching the word he told everybody all those who were listening to him he said you know blessed are the ears that hear blessed are the eyes that see what you see awesome thing god speaking to men through prophets is one thing but god speaking to us in the last days through his son jesus christ that is the greatest thing say amen, amen. he is the final and the full revelation of god himself hallelujah you come to mount zion to the heavenly jerusalem the city of the living god you come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven you come to god the judge of all men listen to the spirits of righteous men made perfect somebody say amen, amen. to the spirits of righteous men made perfect that's a part of god he will take something very imperfect and he'll walk on he'll walk on with the clay amen he will touch here and there for months seasons for a lifetime is going to just keep on working and working and working until one day you declare saying hey you are perfect say amen you're perfect we come to the spirits of righteous men made perfect they were not but they were made perfect to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant hallelujah between god and myself i got a new mediator he is the wrath neutralizer he neutralized the wrath of god against my sin against my transgression in my life somebody say amen that's the only reason i can go to god saying abba father that's the reason jesus taught his disciples when he taught them how to pray he just simply said when you come to god you open your mouth and say our father in heaven who would dare to say father father is a word of love amen they knew him as god but to address him as father it's difficult because you'll die because of your sin it's only because of jesus the wrath of god against the sins of humanity was completely neutralized absorbed amen then he said now you don't need to stand in the outer courts not even in the holy place any time every time any given time you can walk into the holy of holies and god and call god as your daddy amen I want to tell you that some of us if you don't come close to God maybe you misunderstood God your ideas about who God is it's misunderstood the more you understand about God you only come close to God you follow what I'm talking about we sing a song draw me nearer we don't sing i come nearer when did we come There was a time we left everything we ran away we were like you know one sheep that was you know lost out of the 99 but he came behind me go and talk to Adam Adam what happened you know I was running away I didn't go after God but he came after me say hallelujah he said where are you Adam where are you Adam yes I know your sin I know purposely you've done it I know you didn't listen to my word but you listened to the words of your wife oh because you listen to the words of your wife oh i want to listen to my husband good if husband says something in line with what the word of god says listen if a wife says something in line with what the bible says listen amen the relationship with god is about every other relationship husband is husband wife is a wife but nobody is a god to anybody god is god amen first god then christ then husband then wife then children hallelujah in any given situation when you talk about a family the first thing is god then christ and then the husband father and then the wife mother and the children say amen because you listen to your wife and violated my word i know you have done that but still i am coming after you what a loving god amen i want to tell you today i serve him because he came after me still i am serving him because whenever i fell down he picked me up not one time twice a hundred times amen hallelujah we have a powerful god the connection between you and god it is through his word i want to thank god even though i am hiding at times like adam but still his voice is so powerful it can penetrate my hiding place 
Adam could not see God but he was able to listen to the voice Where are you Adam Lord I can't meet with you I can't see you face to face no mind are you listening to my voice yes God come out The voice brought you out Amen that's why the bible say you come to God the judge of all men and then it says to the spirits of righteous men made perfect then it says to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant and then it says to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel I'm finishing here are you happy Amen <laughs> No man <laughs> Okay, the final word you come to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel listen now many don't understand the blood of Christ was shed but after being shed what does it do it has a voice and it has words can you ever imagine the blood is speaking continuously the blood is screaming into the ears of the father continuously because the devil whenever he gets a time is looking for occasions opportunities to come and accuse about you he would like to bring about every sin that you have committed replay it magnified creating a sense of unworthiness so that like adam you leave the presence of god and go hide yourself somewhere and never come out i'm speaking to somebody If you are hiding for too long in the name of Yeshua Messiah a decree come on come out in Jesus name my god is bigger than your sins there's nothing that god doesn't know about you amen you when you come to god you must come with your sins and no way you can say i deserve god none of us we deserve if you come to god you must come with your sins because he is the only one who can remove the sins take the stain of sins in your life say amen Hallelujah. The Bible say to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Here is a comparison between the blood of Jesus and the blood of Abel. Cain murdered Abel. So the blood of Abel being to cry out. Always remember people can murder anybody, spill the blood and still not be found out. but my bible says around the world in every nation and all over the time right from the time immemorial humanity was ever found right from the time of adam and eve every blood that spilled on the ground i want to tell you it is calling out for god to bring justice amen every other blood is calling out to god for revenge and for justice except one blood amen It's only the blood of Jesus. When they crucified him on the cross and he cried out saying, Father, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Hallelujah. People who forgive, they know something better than those who don't forgive. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Don't hold on to the bitterness. It's a root. It will defile you. It will paralyze you. It will take you away from God. You will be a prison of your own bitterness. But Jesus said, I know something what these people do not know. They abuse me. They torture me. They do all these things to me. I know something what these people do not know. They do not even know what they are doing. Forgive them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the same thing the blood of jesus speaking on your behalf lord forgive my son forgive my daughter hallelujah you know i want to tell you you, th- you may think your sin is uh, uh, big and great but i would like to tell you the blood of jesus is even bigger even greater hallelujah even the worst sinner on the face of the earth this was mercy under the cross because the price that has been paid it is for the entire world when john the baptist when he looked at jesus he said behold the lamb of god who will take away the sins of the world john knew very well it is not about killing calf no sheep goat year after year but he said look at the lamb of god this lamb of god hallelujah he is the one who will take away the sins of the world amen not a ritual you will cleanse you on the inside on the inside you will become clean your conscience can become clean your heart can become clean your mind can become clean your body can become clean i want to tell you there is power in the blood of jesus to 
cleanse your soul your spirit your body every organ even your past is redeemed and deleted amen hallelujah god says i'll forgive your sins i will not remember your sins anymore who will say that who will say that i will forgive and i will not remember the word of god says stand with me i'll read from verse 25 then you can join with me verse 28 see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks if they did not escape and they refused him who won them on earth how much less will we if we turn away from him who wants us from heaven at the time his voice shook the earth but now he has promised once more i will shake not only the earth but also the heavens the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken that is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain read along with me verse 28 therefore since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken let us be thankful and so worship god acceptably with reverence and awe for our god is a consuming fire my friend i want to tell you come on can i hold your eyes for a moment i just want to decree and declare this over you i want to prophesy over you here the bible says you received a kingdom that cannot be shaken no matter how big the demon is no matter what's the power that comes from the pits of hell which grab situation i would like to tell you in jesus name you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken what does it mean you cannot be shaken because you are in the kingdom kingdom is a combination of two words king plus domain a king who rules in a particular domain is called kingdom amen when we are in the kingdom of god who is the king jesus he is the king of kings and the lord of lords say everybody his name is about every other name in heaven above and on earth and under the earth somebody say hallelujah so you and i we received a kingdom that cannot be shaken your foundation is too strong because the lion of judah is seated on the throne the ancient of days is seated on the throne the alpha the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last the one who was the one who is and the one who is to come he is seated on the throne the one who dwells in unapproachable light he is seated on the throne hallelujah your king is too big than your little human mind could ever comprehend or confear amen the word says the time is going to come today we walk by faith and not by sight we just believe in somebody whom we have not seen but the day is going to come you're going to behold jesus face to face it shall be no longer faith because the faith will become a reality the faith will become a sight Hallelujah. Now we see a poor reflection as in a mirror. But the time is going to come. I'm going to behold him face to face. I'm going to embrace him. I'm going to love him for all eternity. I want to tell you if life is real. If your breath is real. I want to tell you death is real. If it, this life is real. But it's very short. But eternal life is more real. you are designed and created for eternity don't just spend your time thinking about what shall i eat what shall i wear no what shall i stay what can i do only thinking about only this world the bible says the pagan world the world that doesn't know god runs after all these things the word of god says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added to you run out to god pursue god because god tells you my son my daughter you received a kingdom that cannot be shaken devil cannot shake it up hallelujah that means you cannot be shaken your roots are too deep you are unshakable immovable in the person of jesus christ hallelujah christ is everything in me say amen hallelujah i have a kind request would you please take your eyes off from you and focus on jesus Stop nagging yourself, talking about your past, talking about your failures, talking about your problems. I want to tell you, 
that shows we have a sick mind our mind is not renewed you can have a problem that doesn't mean that you need to have a sick mind you can have a sick body it doesn't mean that you need to have a sick mind you follow what i'm saying my mind is renewed by the word of god hallelujah hallelujah job didn't lose his mind he lost everything open your mouth and say after me job did not lose his mind that's why the devil wanted to curse god and die everything's over devil it's just beginning it just beginning tell the devil it just beginning amen the bible says god bless the later life of job than his first part amen he was twice blessed i want to tell you what you have seen is nothing come back to what's going to come up amen you're going to be twice blessed open your mouth sir twice blessed double for trouble say double for trouble double for trouble amen say the little smile on your face double for trouble you're going to get it amen sing along come on go this dancer stand sir sing them sir right in your heart believe as you rise strength of god go before lift me up as i wait eyes of god look upon be my sight as i wait
that can be shaken and the things that cannot be shaken i want to tell you know some of us we need to do that paradigm shift you just you know bank on a lot of things you know when you define yourself based on what you have you know what you have will be shaken you mark my words what you have will be shaken everything that's created will be shaken so that that cannot which cannot be shaken may remain Amen. If your foundation is anything other than God, I want to tell you, it will collapse. It will collapse. It will collapse. But if Christ in you is the hope of glory, that means you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. You know, you can lose anything but not Christ. Not His power. Not His glory. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is in me. The one who is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. Thank God for a house. Thank God for a good job. Thank God for the money you have. Friends and relatives. But they are not your hope. Those things that are created can be shaken. It will be shaken. Then you know what is your foundation. But if you say Christ is your foundation. I want to tell you the Bible says you have received a kingdom. Open your mouth and say I have received a kingdom. That cannot be shaken. Tell the devil. What is my future? Tell him I have received a kingdom because I am in that kingdom. I have a king. The king has covered me. I am taken care. I am monitored. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken because he lives I can face tomorrow. Lift your hands. I want to pray and bless you. Father God, I want to pray and ask for your blessings upon everyone here this morning even those who are watching us through the television and the internet around the world in Jesus most powerful name oh God they know they have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken their faith cannot be shaken the love for God cannot be shaken who can separate me from the love of Jesus Paul said oh God I pray for everybody their faith will rise up oh God they will not build up their life based on what they have but they will build up their life based on the word of God. Their foundation will be on the word of God. Hallelujah. May Christ in them be their glory. Be their portion of God. 
I pray as they leave this place, let them go with faith in their heart, believing and trusting God. They have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We want to thank you. We want to give you all the glory, power and praise. You are worthy of all honor. In Jesus most powerful precious name we pray may God's people say amen, amen. hallelujah amen.